In this presentation, we will record a cash donation into our not-for-profit organization. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're going to go on over to our Excel sheet to see what our objective will be. So let's jump into Excel. We're going to be in the second tab, so tab number two, where we have a cash donation. Now we're going to record this all as like one lump sum donation, but you can imagine multiple different donations of cash, which would be resulting in a similar transaction. This possibly being one of our more uh, current or frequent type of transactions, the cash donation. So what's going to happen? Well, cash is going to be increasing. So from a journal entry or account perspective, cash would then be going up. The other side is going to go to kind of like what would be our revenue type of account. We're going to call it the contributions account. And it's going to be a contributions without restrictions. The assumption being here that there has been put no restrictions on the cash donation that has been given to us. Obviously, we, we are a not-for-profit organization, which has two programs. That's our primary goal uh, for the cash donations. But there's been no further restrictions uh, other than, you know, to do our objective as the not-for-profit organization. Therefore, it goes into contributions without restrictions. If we take a look at our accounts then, in a, in a trial balance space, format the cash would then be increasing the other side would be down here on an income statement side of things so this is income so this is a revenue account revenue is going up in the credit direction and that would mean that net income would be increasing net income is increasing as well as we could see uh, down below so net income increases here that's an increase that's a credit increase in the credit direction that's going to be our uh, objective note of course as we see these income statement accounts on the statement of activities we're going to want to start to break this information out into the statement of activities, those with donor restrictions and those without donor restrictions. But as of this point in time, we have no, no items without donor restrictions. So we're fairly straightforward here within our statement of activities with this added kind of dimension on it. Okay, so let's go back over to our journal entry and then we'll jump on into zero. Let's go back into zero here. And we're going to use our standard form. So if someone gave us money, we're going, to see, we're going to go to our standard type of form. We're going to say plus button, go down, and we're going to say the receive money form. So we got the receive money type of form. We're going to be choosing the account this time, of course, being the checking account. Now here, do want to note that uh, if, you're, if you're, for example, receiving, having some kind of thing going on where you're receiving many donations at one time, and like, let's say they're cash donations, and then you expect to go to the bank at the end of the day, you may then want to put them into the clearing account uh, or some kind of clearing account, undeposited funds, let's say, and then transfer them into the checking account at the point in time that you take those deposits into the bank. Why? Because you want your system here in zero to be uh, deposited in the same format as they will be shown on the bank statement. And that will make your reconciliation comparing our checking account to the, to the bank statement easier to do. And that's going to be your objective. So just keep that in mind whenever you're entering deposits here how can you group them in such a way that there will be the same format of grouping that will be shown on the bank statement so that you can compare those two reconcile them very easily but for purposes of this problem we're going to go in and just put it right into the checking account and then we're going to say next and then here's going to be our receive payment form so i'm going to just say this came from donor two so this is a person this is a, we're imagining this is a person or, or organization that's giving us money so donor two because we're a not-for-profit organization so donor two i'm going to say that this happens on the second so i'm going to bring this back to january number two january 2nd then we're going to use our item now our items are straightforward now it's just going to be a donation so i'm just going to say donation so there's our item for the donation and then the amount and we can imagine multiple different amounts or multiple different donations of a similar transaction that would add up to the 189700 for our practice problem. So we're putting them all in one group sum. All donations we could see would be in this format. So then we have uh, the contributions. That's correct because that's the revenue account being driven by this item. No sales tax, of course. And then uh, restricted or unrestricted, this is going to be unrestricted. And then I'm going to start off by just putting them all into the fundraising. And then later on, we're going to go, we're going to go back in and make any adjustments we need to. Fundraising, probably fine with the revenue side of things. But with the expense side of things, we'll, we'll make a, an adjustment uh, in accordance with our percentages. So we'll do that later. No restricted item here. So that looks like it. 
what's going to happen when we record this it's going to increase the cash account this time the checking account the other side is going to be going to our contribution unrestricted in essence our revenue account we can also print this form out as some evidence of the contribution to our donor of the cash contribution if we so choose and we can track this information by basically customer or donor to, to see what these donations have been let's go ahead and look at it we're going to say save then going to go ahead and save this thing and then we'll open up our reports let's go to the accounting drop down then we're going to go to the accounting drop down up top we'll then open up the balance sheet we'll be opening up the balance sheet report one of our primary uh, reports here the dates let's change the date to january 2020 so bringing this out to january 31st 2020 updating that report then we have now in the checking account that 189700 on the equity side of things we got the 189700 because that's in the current earnings which we'll also see on the income statement so let's go back up top and let's uh let's go to the tab up top right click on that tab duplicate that tab it then is the balance sheet is on the right we're going to go back to the left so that we can then open the income statement our other favorite report accounting drop down Going down to the income statement, you may otherwise know it as the profit and loss or the PNL, the not for profit name being the statement of activities, which we'll rename it later. That won't be a problem. The renaming won't be a problem of it. So we're going to say, all right, now we have the contributions unrestricted with the 225500 and then the rent we had last time. Let's go into that 225500 and uh, drill down on it. So we'll zoom in on that number, see the activity within it. I believe we have two items up at this point. So there's the donation one, donation two. We can obviously then go into that donation form if we want to see the actual form. If we wanted to print this form, we can go to the options up top. We can go and view it as a PDF and print it as a PDF if we so choose. Going to go back out of it. I'm going to then go back and then back to our income statement. Let's duplicate this form then. I'm going to right click on the income statement up top. I'm on the tab. I'm on the tab up top. I'm up here. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that again. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate. Go back to the tab to the left. Let's go back to the accounting drop down. Let's then look at our reports again. Let's look at another report. And then I'm going to go into the sales items. Hit the drop down. And then we have our income by contact. Income by contact. Actually a better name than some than like income by customer for our not-for-profit, right? Income by contact because they're donors instead of customers and, and whatever. So here we have our income by, by customer. And then again, this is another useful report for us to track the, the income by contact. Now I'm going to jump back over to the income statement here. And just note that uh, we do have the, the groupings here and you might be saying, well, what are we doing with those categories? We don't have anything broken out yet between the categories, but just note that some of the filtering options we will see shortly is if we go to the report options down below, this is where we have those two categories, the restricted and the unrestricted. Now, currently we're saying, hey, I'd like to see all of it, all, you know, all of the restricted and unrestricted. What this means is like, I want all of it included in, in the income line. So it's all included in this income line here uh it's all included here now if we had multiple columns if we want to set up multiple columns we can do so and we're going to do so by editing the report and it's zero is actually really nice to be able to do this it's a little bit more complicated to kind of edit the reports because they're not just fixed uh reports that are going to be broken out you know in in a certain a few couple ways you have more customization it's a little bit more difficult to set up but once set up, we can have more flexibility because you'll recall what our objective will be, of course, is, is once we have this stuff on the income statement, we want to, we want to be able to present this in such a way that it's going to be easy for people to, to, to pick up the information. So if I scroll down, we have the statement of activities has the two columns. So we'd like to have something that's kind of broken out like this, if we can customize it within the software and then be able to break out more detail uh, such as the expenses being broken out by both nature and by function the flexibility with zero will, will allow us to 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 do that because what we want to do is give something that's going to be a little bit more simplified at first to the board so that they can make decisions on it and then add more detail with more detailed reports uh, as we go so we'll get into that later once we start to break this this information out into uh, more categories than just simply the unrestricted which we have at this point that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.